welcome to, or welcome back to, Ampersand Unique Gifts and Home Decor. Today we're going to take a small side table or dresser that has apothecary looking drawer fronts, and we're going to make them look like they have tile drawer fronts. So stick around, see how it turns out, and I'll see you on the flip side. All right, well, here she is. Three drawers, looks like nine, it's dirty, but really in general, great shape. So we're going to get all the drawer pulls off. We're going to have to next um, actually remove the back. It is broken, but because it fits up against a flat surface, I can move on without needing that on there at all. But it was just broken. I will save it because I never get rid of wood. There'll be some project that I use it on. So because I am going to paint it, Yes, I said paint it. Yep, you heard that right. I said painting it. So if you're one of those folks that gets really upset when people like me paint wood furniture, this is where you're tempted to bow out. But I hope that you don't. I hope that you stay curious and you think with an open mind and you stay till the end and see what it looks like. You just might like it. So the goal with sanding was just to give it a good scuff. Um, I'm using a 220 grit sand paper and the drawers turned out perfectly but when I went to the top nothing ever works quite the way you expect it to and it began to give me this uh, gummy chunky um, experience on the top of it. So I did go ahead and switch gears. Plan B, I'm going to use quick strip stripper and it is exactly that. It is very quick. I really like this stuff. Um, so normally I would put it on there and then kind of spread it around with a brush, but I didn't have an extra brush with me right now. So I just went ahead, sprayed it on there and then covered it with press and seal. You can use any kind of plastic. This is just what I have, uh, out here in the shop with me. So I covered it up and then I let it sit for, um, what ended up being about 30 minutes. And while that was sitting, I hopped over to begin my first experience with mud paint. This is the beautiful buttery lemon color uh, straw. And this is the first time I've ever used mud paint. I shook it really well. And then I stirred it just to double check because, again, it was my first time. I didn't know how it would do. Um, but I could have skipped this step. It was, it was beautifully mixed. Uh, this is a clay based paint so it has that wonderful matte finish that I'm going for here. It went on very well. I'm using the um, uh, Debbie's Design Diary brush and the feather and I it was new. I just wanted to use it and see how it did. Um, I actually got it to use with my top coats but as you can see I am using it here and it spread that wonderfully. So you can see here everything with one coat of paint so far. Okay, so I had asked some of you guys in a post about whether or not to use the small or the large. And I have to admit, most of you went with the small. But then one of you, thank you, Megan, asked the question about whether or not it was going to be functional or decorative. And they are definitely the functional pulls. So I will have one on each side. And my hand guesses you would use two hands or even one in the middle to pull out, which does mean it's going to be probably more beneficial to use the larger one. And even though I am going to be putting a transfer over top of here, I got to thinking about it, and I probably should still put a little bit of something in these holes. So I hadn't filled them, but thinking it over, I think I'm going to. So we're going to use some of this Durham's Rock Hard, Rock Hard Water Putty, and it is just, it's just a powder, and you mix it with regular water, and it will actually be rock hard. And we're going to fill these little holes, and then we'll let it dry, sand it down, put another coat. I kind of need a third coat of paint here it really in this light it just you can't see that beautiful yellow but it is a very buttery lemon yellow but there are kind of some places let's see if i can get focused in there are just some places that it looks a little bit lighter and even though i'm going to be distressing it i am going to go and put the third coat on it after i fill these in all right so let's check back and see how our stain is doing with our stripper 
So I do kind of just a test here to see if I think it's been sitting long enough and it had, so I pull my plastic off and then I begin just kind of the long strips of getting whatever I can off. And after I do that, I went ahead, I didn't film it, but I went ahead and cleaned it really well and now I am just sanding to get any tiny little pieces maybe that didn't come off and then also just to smooth it out. So I'm going to shellac the top of this because it is now raw wood and I want to make sure, especially since I'm using a light paint color, that I don't have any bleed through. And then I'm just using this fine grit steel wool to get rid of any little grit or texture that that shellac might have left. So again, using my mud paint in the color straw, this wonderful clay-based paint is giving wonderful coverage. That's what I just kind of wanted to show you here. Um, how smooth that brush gets that paint on there and how great it covers. I mean, this is a really darkish red stain. So I just wanted to really show how great it is. Here I am just painting the other side. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch me paint the whole thing. Um, just enough to really advertise what a great paint. All right, so now I'm going to flip back over to the drawers and I am putting just a, a one clear coat. I didn't really seal it necessarily. I just wanted to make sure that it was smooth because I'm going to use transfers. I used two different transfers by Redesign by Prima and they are both a tile. This one did not have enough to do the entire drawer, so I am going to break into that other set and I will put all the products that I use in the description of the video so you'll be able to see the name of these in case it's something you want to look into purchasing. And you could get them from Vintage Bee Designs and I get um, my transfers from Melissa there. So this one, you can see they're really large tiles. I can't wait to use these on something. It's like four tiles that make up one picture. But I'm going to use these little ones and try to find something that matches really well with the eight that I have in the other one. So once I pick them out, I just go ahead and cut them. And I just eyeballed it. You can measure it. Um, there wasn't really a very large space here to have to deal with. If I had a larger space, I might have measured to make sure it was in the center. Um, and then you just use the transfer stick that comes with it. So each transfer will come with a transfer stick. I like to press it down all over just to kind of give it a little bit of a hold and then work a little bit at a time. So I'm kind of going back and forth and gently pulling the plastic cover off of it. And if it's not um, fully sticking to the item, so in this case the drawer front, I would just push it back down and rub a little bit more. If you were doing something really slick like a mirror or glass, you might tape it down. I've definitely learned my lesson about not taping it down and having it shift. Once I have it on there, I'm going to just take that plastic coating and I am going to uh, burnish it to make sure there's no bubbles or any place that didn't stick. Is that not so pretty in this yellow? So again, went through, made sure I had nine that I liked that all kind of went together and looked really pretty with that yellow and I finished putting them on there. So just hopping back over, you can see what it looked like with the one coat. Now I'm just covering it with a second coat and I do end up using um, you know, two and a half, three coats. It may not have been three coats in every single place. Um, but what I also did here, I just want to show, I didn't paint the entire back. It had kind of a lip that went all the way around it and I painted that, but then I left this natural back piece because it's its own piece of like really thin plywood. Um, so I didn't feel that I needed to paint that. All right, for any of you about to have a cow because I am painting a piece of wood furniture, this is not that old. It is not a precious antique. And we are going to paint it. Look, I can't hold the phone and paint at the same time. <laughs> we'll do a better job than this, I promise. Just keep watching. So this is me putting the final coat, that third coat of paint, and again, I really didn't do a third coat everywhere, but I just kind of looked at it to see what needed it, and then I moved on to distressing. So I literally just have a block of wood with a piece of 220 sandpaper wrapped around it, uh, just to kind of get in and get those flat edges. And I just wanted to distress it. The transfers have kind of a natural distress look to them and I wanted to make sure that the paint job matched the tile and so I'm not trying to make it too bad don't want to cheat a print look on it from the way some things uh, get distressed but just around the edges and places that would naturally distress so I do the drawer fronts and then I drew um, 
I go ahead and wipe them and get them clean because when I seal them, I just didn't want that yellow dust in there. Uh, moving over to the actual dresser itself, I'm putting my 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander and I'm going to get that top smooth. Um, it made the most amazing, beautiful crackle effect when I used that shellac and then painted over it. So that really added to it looking like it was an old piece. So I love that. But I am lightly sanding this. I, I don't want to get in through, um, you know, into that wood too much. I'm trying to just go to the original, I'm really smoothing it on the top and trying to get into that original stain around the edges but not on the top because of course obviously it was the lighter wood because I stripped all the stain off of it. But anyway, here it is again, just um, went through all the edges and places that it would naturally, um, you know, distress through age. All right, so sometimes when we upcycle, paint, craft, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, then it's about learning and learning how to fix boo-boos. So if you look here, my fingernails and hands are filthy, you can see where I sanded and I got, oh, there, whoa, it didn't want focus. Okay, anyway, we're going to go with it blurry. You can see the dark stain part, and then you can see where I got through that. Oh my goodness, right? There we go. And you can see where I got into the MDF, because this is not real wood. So you can see the color of the stain, and then you can see where I got into the wood on the edge. So, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take these furniture touch-up markers. There's three different colors. And I think the middle one, which is the one down here on the bottom, the middle brown, is the one that matches the best. So what we're going to try to do is get that to not be so obvious. And when we continue to distress and we are going to put a dark wax on there, we're going to hope that it'll blend in and not be so obvious that we got clear through into the MDF. So here we go. Well, I'm sorry about the buildup and now the letdown, but apparently I wasn't filming. So here's me pretending to take my beautiful marker on the corners, but you'll see it in the final reveal. Uh, after I did that, I clear coated the top of these drawers or the front of these drawers and I started with my drawer pulls. I eyeballed that first one just looking at the tile that was on there and putting it in the center. And then I found this piece of trim work that was in the shop. And it was exactly the right size to go from that edge of that lip on that drawer to the side of the pull. So I just measured and marked with my pencil down to make sure that each one of them was the right and same distance from the top. And most importantly, was just making sure that when you're standing in front looking at it, that they're all even and level and they line up. Uh, so here is the mud paint matte clear coat that I used on the entire piece and I'm putting it in its own bowl to avoid any contamination back into my clear coat. If there was any dust or anything from the sanding, I don't want that in my clear coat and potentially adding that to a future piece. So here, I just had to slow down. Look at that beautiful crackle. Uh, I put three coats of the clear coat on the top. It'll obviously get the most wear, whether it's a nightstand or a side table. Uh, and then I put two coats everywhere else just to, you know, seal that clay paint. So you want to make sure it has a good sealant on it. You can't really see the beautiful yellow right here. It looks a little bit more like off-white. But here's the final reveal. I might be going crazy. I don't know what to do. My heart is screaming for you, babe. And what I'm trying to say is you make the sky look blue even when it is gray, babe.